What's going on everyone? Happy Halloween. Today we are ranking the top 10 scariest movies. A recent study called the Science of Scare Project was just published for the third consecutive year to determine what the scariest movies are according to science. In today's rankings, we are going to be re-ranking the recently published 2022 list of the 10 scariest movies. Give the video a like, subscribe with the bell notification on, and comment down below what you want to see ranked next on today's rankings. Let's get into it. Number 10, Dash Cam. What in the world did I just watch? Is the only thing that came to my mind as the credits of this movie rolled. Let's get something out of the way. I have no earthly idea how this one made the top 10 scariest movies list this year. The film is very self-aware of the trend within modern society to record everything. It follows Annie, who hosts a very cringe-worthy traveling music show called Band Car, and I use the term music very loosely here. She, along with her good friend Stretch, get more than they asked for when through a series of events, Annie agrees to care for a sick woman named Angela. Insanity ensues shortly thereafter. Perhaps it was the perspective of the movie being filmed as if it were a vlog, but I found myself asking what is happening almost half of the movie it seems. The intent is to cause worry from the perspective of the movie's characters, but personally I found it more frustrating than worrisome. Sure, there are definitely some scary moments within the film, but as a whole I really didn't find myself that frightened. To give the movie some credit, it's very original and actually does a pretty good job of the plot not completely tailing off in the later half of the movie, as can be the tendency with some horror films. Ultimately, this movie just feels like so much continual chaos, partially due to the style of filming, that it almost begins to take away from the movie in some aspects. It's also the only film on today's list that I wouldn't really recommend to fans of the horror genre. Did I find it terrifying? Not particularly. Was it entertaining? Sure, I guess. Would I watch it again? Absolutely not. Points for originality, but this one misses the mark and earns the lowest spot on the list. Number 9. It Follows Heralded by some as one of the best horror movies of the century when it was released in 2014, the film is centered around a girl named Jay who is being pursued by some kind of supernatural force after a sexual encounter. The premise of the movie is that this supernatural force continues to follow a person until that person passes along the mark, if you will, to another person via a sexual encounter. Along with her sister and a few friends, Jay must confront it, this it, not that it, which also is capable of taking on the form of anyone. The movie definitely gets points for uniqueness, and while there is definitely some suspense throughout, at no point did I come close to being terrified. In fact, without spoiling anything, I really only found one scene in the entire film to be a jump scare that really got me. This is probably the biggest hot take of the entire video, but I didn't particularly enjoy It Follows as a horror film. In fact, at many points I found the film to be more amusing than scary. Sporting a whopping 95% on Rotten Tomatoes, It Follows certainly is not a bad film, but in my opinion is still wildly overrated. To be honest, I'm a bit shocked this somehow managed to make it into this year's top 10 as well. Perhaps even more incredibly, it has managed to make it into the top 7 in all 3 years that this study has been conducted since 2020. Not to hate on the movie too much, because it's still a good film, but if I were making my own list of 10 horror movies, this wouldn't qualify in the top 10, and definitely not as a top 10 scariest movie. Number 8. A Quiet Place Part 2 The movie is undoubtedly one of the most well-made films on today's list. I don't think anyone would argue that. However, it does seem a bit odd that it was included on the list of 10 scariest films for 2022. The film definitely has its scarier moments as it follows the story of Evelyn Abbott and her two young teens as well as her newborn infant baby. Following the events of the first film, the Abbots now have the knowledge of a weakness of the terrifying creatures wreaking havoc in the post-apocalyptic world they are now all a part of. Cillian Murphy, who plays Lee, is an excellent addition to the cast, and John Krasinski continues to showcase his capability to create suspenseful yet alluring films. I have very few qualms with this movie, other than the fact that it's difficult for me to see it being included on a list of top 10 scariest movies. One of my first thoughts exiting the theater after seeing this film was that I found it interesting that the movie was billed as a horror movie at all. The film felt much more akin to something like Steven Spielberg's 2005 War of the Worlds, 
In my opinion, the film most closely resembles a suspense or thriller film with some minor horror elements here and there. To be fair, the categorization of the rankings by the Science of Scare project are not explicitly withheld to horror movies. Rather, they are looking to, quote, find the scariest movies in existence based on what gets hearts pumping and pulses racing. In fact, the only reason I'm placing it at number eight and not lower than the other two films we've already discussed is that it genuinely did more to keep me on the edge of my seat with my heart racing, even if it may not contain the typical elements we're used to seeing from a horror film. A Quiet Place Part 2 is a fantastic movie and one of the first movies I saw in theaters following the COVID-19 pandemic. However, it definitely belongs in the category of movies that you'd recommend as a baby step for someone wanting to get more into horror movies for the first time. Number 7. Paranormal Activity the film is a classic in the horror movie genre and is one of the most well-known found footage style movies of all time. It centers around a couple, Katie and Mika, who begin to experience some pretty abnormal occurrences, especially during the nighttime. We also learn that there is an evil presence that has been with Kate for most of her life. Perhaps the most incredible part about Paranormal Activity is that the entire movie was made on a budget of only $15,000. It would go on to gross nearly $200,000 at the box office. Taking into account return on investment, this makes it one of the most profitable movies of all time. Additionally, the film's actors largely ad-libbed the majority of the scenes, which creates a very grounded, real, and organic feel throughout the film. While I love paranormal activity, there really isn't an overwhelming sense of fear outside from maybe the final 10 minutes. Rather, it's the constant threat of danger, particularly during the nighttime, while the characters are sleeping and at their most vulnerable, that prolong an unending sense of uneasiness within the viewer. The first half of the movie is relatively slow-paced and somewhat underwhelming, but things definitely ramp up in the latter half. Paranormal activity ushered in an era of change in the horror genre, keeping viewers guessing because the evil force is never seen. Without paranormal activity, it's very likely many of the great horror films of the past decade would not be as highly regarded as they are. I just have one more question. Was I the only one asking why not just close the bedroom door? Number 6. Host. Host is also very unique in that it takes place entirely over a Zoom call and was filmed at the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. The director of Host, Rob Savage, is the same director who created Dashcam, the first film on today's list. There are very evident similarities between the two movies, specifically the use of technology to tell the story. However, where Dashcam seems to fall short sometimes, Host never felt that way. A group of friends gathers over a call to conduct a seance with the aid of a professional medium. Most of them are hesitantly approaching the call, minus one of the main characters, Haley, who is also the one that contacted the medium, named Salen. Things quickly go from eerie to spooky to downright scary pretty quickly. In fact, the movie in total is less than an hour long. While the achievement of the movie itself is something to be commended due to the unusual nature of its filming, what adds to the fear and suspense is the very fact that the actors are in isolation in their own homes during the call. The film may lack some depth, after all you can only do so much in less than an hour. However, for what it is, the movie is an incredible film and the only film on today's rankings with a perfect score on Rotten Tomatoes. There are undoubtedly many moments of genuine fright, and when it comes to scares, Host does not miss the mark. Number 5. Terrified When strange events occur in a neighborhood in Buenos Aires, a doctor specializing in the paranormal, her colleague, and an ex-police officer decide to investigate further. What starts with eerie whispers from a kitchen sink drain quickly turns into physically haunting manifestations. Terrified is a very surprising horror film. It not only delivers legitimate scares from beginning to end, it also contains off-putting images, interesting characters, and a fascinating story. Filmed in Argentina, the movie is also the only movie on today's rankings that was not filmed in English. While it certainly doesn't lack in jump scares, these are not what sets the movie apart. It is rarer that a horror movie puts its supernatural manifestations directly in front of our eyes, especially prior to the finale of the film. The uncomfortability and uneasiness sits with the viewer throughout the movie as the scares come in a variety of manners, whether it be a quick shock or a slow building eeriness that crawls down your neck. The accompanying score of Terrified elevates the fear and suspense in the best of ways as well. Typical of most horror films, you're left somewhat questioning at the end, but that doesn't take away from making it one of the more spine-chilling movies on today's list. Number 4. 
Insidious. James Wan is one of the most well-known horror directors of our time. Originally known for his work with the Saw franchise, he is perhaps even more well-known now for his creation of the Insidious franchise. The film was originally created in response to critiques of Saw being too over-the-top violent and gory. With Insidious, Wan takes a different course entirely and chooses to focus more on spiritual and supernatural elements to create a scary atmosphere. When the Lambert family's oldest son Dalton falls into a coma, and after many medical consultations, as well as supernatural run-ins, they consult with Elise, a psychic and supernatural expert who begins to aid the family in search of Dalton's astral form, as she calls it. One of the more commemorated elements of Insidious, as made famous by the scene with the boy next to the coat rack, is the placing of an easter egg of a scare in plain sight, but blink and you might miss it. Additionally, Insidious also includes what might be the most well-known jump scare in the horror movie genre. While the plot may not be 100% sound, the movie doesn't disappoint with scaring the heck out of the viewer, especially any scene with the red-faced demon. In what is ultimately a well-respected and well-remembered horror movie, it is by no means incredible, but it succeeds as a shocking fright fest with plenty of atmosphere, eerie music, and dread. Number 3. Sinister This movie is considered by many to be the most terrifying horror movie, and for good reason too. The film stars Ethan Hawke as Ellison Oswald, a true crime author whose latest interest has brought him, along with his wife, son, and daughter, to a home where a family was tragically killed years before. He is convinced that the investigation of the crime will lead to his next great bestseller. Ellison discovers several old 8mm films in the attic labeled Home Movies, documenting the killing of the family, as well as the killing of several other families from various different occurrences dating back decades. The clues from the 8mm films hint at something much more sinister, no pun intended. Side note, it's never a good sign when the opening premise of a movie is that the main character is willingly moving into a murder house. I found myself constantly asking, why are you going towards the imminent danger? While Sinister doesn't exactly do anything novel for a horror movie, there are two things that set it apart as terrifying. First, it is the use of the 8mm film to display the horrifying and grotesque home movies, if you can call them that. Sinister takes this form of film, which we would typically associate with nostalgia and the good old days, and turns it into a mechanism for fear, murder, and destruction. This is even more evident during each viewing of the 8mm films, where there is always a quick switch of the film from the average happy family to nightmare scenarios ending in the loss of life. The evil presence who Ellison learns is named Bagul is no sight for sore eyes either. However, the second piece of the movie that brings a terrifying element is the film's big reveal revolving around the children. In every facet of the word, it is truly a sinister reveal, one that doesn't punch you in the face like a jump scare, but rather creeps into your stomach and tingles down your spine when you realize the implications of the huge reveal. As a final point, my rewatch of Sinister was only the second time I had ever seen the movie. For the past decade or so, I may or may not have been avoiding watching it again because it scared me so much the first time. Number 2. The Conjuring It's hard to argue that anyone does horror better than director James Wan, and The Conjuring is one of the best examples of his work. This movie has a way of conjuring fear in me every time I see it. The film seems to take a lot of cues from the 1973 horror classic The Exorcist as well. What adds even further to the uneasiness and continuous dread throughout the movie is that it is based upon a true story with the characters in the film playing the roles of real-life individuals. The Conjuring follows the Perrin family, a married couple with five daughters who just moved into a big house in small town Massachusetts. The family realizes that they are not alone in the house and shortly thereafter come into contact with Ed and Lorraine Warren, renowned demonologists who quickly affirm the Perrin family's fears, confirming that the home is indeed haunted and may actually require an exorcism. There are certainly more religious themes at play compared to most of the other movies on today's list. For me personally, this typically does more to elevate the fear factor of the film than take away from it. Any great horror film can't simply rely on jump scares, and while the movie definitely has some good ones, they are placed in ways that add to the atmosphere of the story. Additionally, the finale of the film is beyond spine-chilling, 
and even uncomfortable to watch at points. The Conjuring excellently combines two horror subgenres, the haunted house and the exorcism, in a way that is genuinely scary, that keeps the palms sweating and the hearts pounding. For those that like their horror served with appetizing scares and delicious suspense, this will deliver plenty to your table. Before we get to today's top ranking, be sure to check out the link in the description after the video if you're interested in checking out the full Science of Scare project. Number 1. Hereditary This masterpiece of a psychological horror film is without a doubt the scariest movie I have seen in my entire life. Shockingly, this is director Ari Aster's feature directorial debut, which he also followed up with another fantastic movie, Midsummer, the following year. This is a film that friends will dare one another to watch and then instantly regret it. The movie centers around the Graham family. When Ellen, the grandmother, passes away, cryptic and terrifying family secrets begin to unravel. As Annie and the rest of the family begin to discover more about their lineage, they must try and outrun this ominous fate they have inherited. The use of slow building tension and horrifying details in plain sight is simply unmatched in the horror genre. The members of the family are rather odd, specifically Charlie, who continually makes clicking noises as well as cuts the heads off of birds. There is a specific event that occurs in the first third of the film that is deeply discomforting that begins the family's emotional descent. Hereditary weaves together the mythology and the deeply disturbing in a way where sometimes you're not really sure what is real and how much is the deteriorating mental state of the characters. The final 15 minutes of the film are absolutely the most unnerving, disturbing, and scariest horror movie moment I have ever experienced. The movie is also a deeply sad tale of decaying family ties, trauma, and the impact of mental illness. Finally, perhaps the biggest determinant for why Hereditary lands at the number one spot is that the film seems to leave a massive void within the viewer after its conclusion. I can specifically recall the emptiness I felt when it ended. Its impact continued beyond the end credits, something that is truly rare with horror films for me personally. Hereditary may just be the closest thing to a near masterpiece in horror filmmaking. Check out the videos on screen. Thanks for watching this video. Remember to subscribe and hit that bell to know when the next Today's Rankings video goes live. Leave it a like and comment down below. What do you want to see ranked next? This has been Ben for Today's Rankings. Have a great day.